time for another Knowledge is Power video. In these videos, I give you some content from my premium content library. These are full length lessons, so you can experience my teaching style and see what kind of content is in the library and maybe even learn something new. So these are your freebies. If you haven't yet checked out the premium library, Look below the video, there is a link and a coupon code for a free month. So let's just jump in and learn some new stuff. Hey eBayers, it's Suzanne and I have a case study. This question has come in a few different ways, but the bottom line is how can other sellers sell these things for so cheap? So I got an email this week and here is what she asked. I am dabbling in health and beauty and feel like I must be missing something. When I am listing shampoo, soap, etc., I can't compete with others listing the same thing. Most are providing free shipping and I am doing calculated as I have been doing since watching and listening to advice. In other categories, I am fine with a lower sales price plus shipping and am selling items. Our shipping seems to be averaging seven to eight dollars so far. I've been in business since January 1st and have had 70-ish transactions for about $3,100 in sales. Does seven to eight dollars average in shipping seem reasonable? Items have been a mix of clothes, games, Xbox games, kitchen items, appliances, bath and beauty, etc. But in this category, I just can't get there. My shipping fees seem high. Even when I go in and play with different options, I can't get the cost below five to seven dollars, especially with product lots of three to four products, which is how these seem to be listed. I just have to be missing something on shipping options. How in the world can others do free shipping on these heavy items? And I got these at 90% off retail, so low costs and still can't get there. My store is below. Maybe you can take a look and have ideas. So I asked her to send me links to what she's looking at, her competitors listings, so we can see what they're doing. Because a lot of times it's not what you're doing is wrong. It's who are you competing against and what is their business model. So this is the first one. Some conditioner express hair repair product pack of three. And you can see there they have a stock photo, which is always something you want to pay attention to if you are competing against someone, because that can indicate other things. Seller information. They have a huge feedback number. So that may indicate they're making money on volume, not necessarily each sale. So let's go take a look at their feedback and see what we can figure out from that. So if we look at their feedback within the last month, generally speaking, if you take their total feedback, that's positive, neutral, and negative, add that up and multiply by three, that's about the amount a seller is probably selling. Because if you watch my sales update videos, normally you get about a third feedback based on your actual sales. Only about a third of your customers leave feedback. So we can figure out about how much they're selling. 852 items. That's a lot of items, okay? The average at-home seller does not sell that much. Now, let's go look at the negatives and see what they are for and see if we can see any patterns or draw any conclusions based on what the negatives are. And it looks like really bad customer service. So no communication, uh, bad product, mascara was dried out, wrong items were sent, only received half my order, nasty water filled, and wrong products sent again. So that tells me they're very sloppy on the shipping or the actual seller isn't shipping the items at all. Someone else is. Then we go look at their store 
and they have a large number of items, almost 2,500 items, mostly with stock photos. So this is an indication of drop shipping. If you are not familiar with drop shipping, you must become familiar with it if you're going to sell on eBay because sometimes this is our competitor. Drop shippers do not physically have the item in stock in their possession. They usually make very little profit and have no control over inventory quality, packaging, storage of inventory, or delivery time because they don't have the product in their possession. They also cannot answer questions about the item because they don't have it. And customer service is not usually great because they can't do anything outside of the standard model. For example, if a buyer asks for combined shipping on something or delayed shipping or express shipping, you know, they can't change any of those things because they don't physically have the item and they have to rely on someone else to actually ship it. And in a lot of cases that someone else is Amazon. So what's happening is that people in the US and in other countries do this. So the people in other countries set up both an eBay and an Amazon account with USA addresses. And they create phantom listings on eBay using photos and information from Amazon. So they literally sit there all day, go on Amazon, find something that's selling for cheaper than it is on eBay and then they create this listing by copying the pictures and the information from Amazon and create the listing on eBay. So if we go back to this screenshot here, you can see all of these are stock photos. So all they did was just copy the pictures and the title and put that information on eBay as if they actually have the item. So they don't really have these things in stock. Now, when the item sells on eBay, the seller orders it from Amazon and has it shipped to the eBay customer. They just go in on their Prime account and they just change the ship to address to whoever it is on eBay. And so, for example, the item may sell for $10 on eBay, but costs them $8 on Amazon. They're making a tiny profit doing this, but the attraction is that they don't have to have the item in stock. They don't have to pay a whole bunch of money to buy inventory. And people at first think this is a great idea. Why? Because some people don't buy on Amazon anyway. They're never going to see how much it costs on Amazon because they don't buy there. And if that item is selling for cheaper on Amazon, this will work. While this results in low profit, it can be done without having to buy any inventory, shipping supplies. You don't have to have any of that. And to someone living in a poor country who's only making 50 cents or a dollar on each item without having to buy anything up front or actually run a real business, this can work. So we go back to the feedback of this seller was uh, we figured out about 850 items a month. Even if they're only making a dollar it's worth it to them because maybe they're living in a poor country where you know we wouldn't do this for a dollar but they would so that's what we're competing against when we have these items in stock that are also on Amazon or other websites they're new in the package and these products are not in their possession and you know to me this is just a huge waste of time if you live in the United States because all these thrift stores we have full of stuff, you know, all the abundance, the overflow, the waste stream that we can pick from to sell items. Uh, but some people in the United States still do this. And I can't tell you how many times I have talked to these people, coached them, whatever, to try and make them see the light on how much time is invested in doing this because you have to find these products that are actually selling but they're cheaper on Amazon and then once you find them is it sustainable no it's not you have to continually find items all the time because after a while they don't work anymore so 
I said all of that to say this is what we're competing with sometimes if you're selling new in the package items. Now the next scenario was this listing here where we've got a looks like a smaller seller. So let's go look at their feedback and we can see there they had 15 positives in a month so they probably sold around 45 items. This looks like a smaller at-home seller who just is buying things on clearance or maybe couponing and probably a hobby seller who doesn't track their numbers and doesn't care about profit or even know if they're making a profit especially if they're a couponer that got the item for free and there's a lot of that going on I see this on Facebook groups all the time Facebook marketplace people selling their stockpiles you know they got all this laundry detergent for free or all that couponing world that stuff shows up too so sometimes people are just trying to unload that and make what they can make and they don't even care if they're making a profit they're just doing it for fun or just because they got all this stuff for free so there's no guarantee that profit even exists when you're looking at another seller they could be selling this at a loss so don't assume that because other sellers are selling things for way less than you or something about those listings don't make sense don't assume that they know what they're doing or they're making any money because a lot of times they're not and I've worked with probably thousands of sellers over the year through mentoring and coaching and on my Facebook group helping them and this happens so often where the seller has no idea I'll say well let's look at your numbers what's your profit and they don't even they have no clue they don't know so do this little detective work where you look at their feedback you know, look at their listings does this look like a legit person that's doing the business the same way you are and can you compete with them so the bottom line here is this is why I focus on used items because you can buy low and sell high and you don't have much competition on specific items so with the health and beauty example there may be a hundred listings for a shampoo you are selling but only five listings for a 100 percent cashmere blazer in this particular size so in my case this blazer retails for five hundred dollars I bought it for seven but it can sell used for over a hundred and you cannot do that with a consumable product that anyone can offer for sale it's just too much competition the market is flooded with new in the package consumables because they're more available to everyone it's simple economics supply and demand so I know I've got this whole course on consumables and I've explained how to do it but this is something you may run into so you don't want to base your business solely on any one kind of product you want to diversify but this is especially prevalent in the consumables market because if you can get your hands on it at the dollar store with coupons clearance at the grocery store wherever other people can do that too you're better off selling consumables that are maybe vintage you go to a estate sale there's a whole bunch of perfumes that may or may not be discontinued but they're vintage they're in old bottles things like that that are fewer in supply so even though it's consumable there's specific kinds of consumables that do better like the scrubbing bubbles shower cleaner stuff that sells so well because they're not making it anymore those things do well because the supply is limited so remember your basic economics of supply and demand and before you buy things to resell like this think okay how flooded is the market gonna be who else can get this and uh, be aware that you may have to sell your item at cost or another way maybe on a Facebook group or a Facebook marketplace or something local because eBay does get flooded with this type of stuff it's very hard if not impossible to compete with people who 
are willing to make razor thin margins on their items or don't even do their numbers and have no idea that they're not making money. So another one that might make your head explode but wanted to go over all of that because some of you may not know about this drop shipping business that is going on in the background. Bottom line, picking higher dollar items is the superior method to making profit on eBay. So keep that in mind. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions let me know. Bye. Hi eBay sellers and welcome to my course all about selling bras on eBay. This is the introductory video where I'll go over what you'll learn in this course as well as enlighten you on some opportunities you might be missing if you aren't selling bras or how to up your game if you are selling bras and just want to learn more. So we're going to start with sourcing opportunities meaning when you're out there in the world where the opportunities are for purchasing bras to resell. This is an overlooked niche in my opinion because the average person does not know how easy to sell and profitable bras can be. And I do talk to a lot of average people <laughs> that are not eBay sellers and they had no idea or a lot of other sellers who might be new or just looking for ways to expand their offerings might not realize this. There is an embarrassment factor when both buying bras for resale and actually selling them on eBay. Some sellers are too embarrassed or self-conscious to look through the bras in a store and or bring a bunch to the checkout counter and personally nothing embarrasses me because I'm all about what can I resell but I have heard this from students that say that they would just be mortified to go to the cashier and have a pile of 10 bras all different sizes um, and have to explain that so really when you're buying for resale, you don't have to explain anything. And we can go over some of those objection handlers if you don't know what to say when you are buying bras for resale. But my advice is just to be brave and sell bras. <laughs> Another sourcing opportunity is that men probably won't bother trying to sell bras. They might be embarrassed or overwhelmed figuring out a niche they have no personal experience with. And I have heard this from my male students that they would never in a million years ever do this. So that just creates more opportunities for the people who will. Another opportunity is that the choices of bras are practically an unlimited variety of sizes, colors, styles, and brands. So you can think of it this way, that our cups runneth over with opportunities. <laughs> yes, prepare yourself for a lot of corny jokes about bras during this course because I just couldn't help myself. Okay, moving on to the benefits of selling bras online. The main one, which is the same as many other products, is it's just convenient. Order it online and it's at your door in just a few days. Another factor is privacy. No dressing rooms. I personally hate trying on stuff in a store anyway, so I bring it home and if it doesn't work, I return it. But our customers can try these on at home and see how it works under different garments because they may be buying a specific bra to go under a strapless dress or with a very specific outfit and they need to see how that bra works with that outfit, especially if it's convertible or has some kind of funky back on it and the customer wants to wear a bra with it. 
Another benefit of selling online is that retail stores might not have what you need in stock. And I have experienced this personally in 2021, a year after everything closed for COVID, because retail stores are still lagging behind in restocking inventory. So it's very difficult to find a specific item in retail stores, especially clothing items. Okay, now we're going to move on to the benefits as a seller when you sell bras. These are one of those items that are perfect to add to your eBay inventory. Not only are they pretty and easy to work with, but also have these benefits. Small and don't take up much room to store, generally speaking. You can store a lot of them in a small place. I could not help myself here with showing you the five section booby trap <laughs> bra organizer. I do not use this system, but um, isn't that <laughs> convenient? It's these separators you put in the drawer and you put the bras in between them. But I just thought that name was so clever, the booby trap. I store mine in fabric cubes. So this is my fabric cube storage in my office. And I sort mine by color. So all of the nude or pale pink, and then the colorful ones, and then black. But you can sort them however you like. This is how I've always organized my inventory is by color. That's just the way my brain works. Okay, another benefit as a seller is these are so lightweight and easy to ship. Most weigh less than six ounces and fit in a poly mailer. We'll go over how to ship these later in the course. Also, one of my favorite features, not breakable. No extra packaging needed. You don't need boxes. You don't need bubble wrap. You don't need packing peanuts. None of that. And you don't have to worry about it breaking during shipping. You can squish them down to store very compactly. So I love these kind of products that are just easy to work with and easy to ship and no worries when they're in transit. Okay, another great benefit is that in my experience, bras are rarely returned. I think it's because the buyer knows exactly what size they need. They may be replacing a worn out bra and reorder the exact same one from eBay in used condition, or they have one that fits well and they want different colors or just multiples of the same one. So you can consider bras as somewhat of a consumable because they wear out and they need to be replaced. Okay, and then the last feature, which I mentioned this before, is there's almost an unlimited variety of sizes, colors, styles, and brands. Band sizes 32 and up, I have seen 30 and 28, and cup sizes from A until the sky is the limit. I found several G and H sizes. And every time I think, oh, this must be the largest they make, I find one that is larger. The bottom line here is that you will have exactly what someone needs at some point as far as the combination of size, color, style, brand. Okay, in this course, you will learn how to inspect bras before buying, exactly what to look for that will determine whether you put it in your cart or throw it back. <laughs> the best selling brands and popular styles, sizes, and features, meaning convertible, crossback, strapless, all of those features. You will learn listing tips, keywords, which are very important, using style guides to help you with your listing, photography tips, and pricing tips. Shipping tips, 
There's not a whole lot to say here, but we will go over that because there are some specific questions about shipping. Okay, that's the introduction to selling bras on eBay. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned for more segments in this course. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, post them below or feel free to send me an email. Hi everybody, and welcome back to another fun and educational lesson. The key word and trend we're going to be learning about in this video is hipster. And be forewarned, this is a little different than my normal boring boardroom style <laughs> tutorial videos. I want to have more fun with these videos, so I'm going to change them up a little bit. Disclaimer, if you are a hipster or a hipster wannabe, do not be offended. This is all in good fun. I did my research and all of this is on the internet, so it must be true, right? So we're going to start off with 25 signs that you might be a hipster. Okay, that little montage kind of sums it up. But here's an interesting commentary on why nobody likes hipsters. There are reasons why people hate hipsters, but for me this is the biggest. Hipsters base their whole existence on the notion that they are not following trends. They view non-hipsters, or mainstream society, as a herd of sheeple just mindlessly following what their televisions tell them to do. Meanwhile, they view themselves as a bunch of non-conformist, free-thinking individuals. In reality, they're the ones whose entire existence is a trend. Normal people aren't following trends as much as they're taking the path of least resistance. When I shop at a normal supermarket instead of Whole Foods, it's not because all my friends shop there and I want to fit in. It's because there's a Hannaford's a block away from where I live and there's no Whole Foods near me. Plus, Whole Foods tends to charge a lot more for food that I'm not convinced is actually any better for me. At the same time, there is no way you're going to convince me that every hipster simultaneously completely on their own, decided to start wearing skinny jeans, grow a beard, and become obsessed with expensive coffee. 
No way I believe that every hipster, without influencing each other at all, independently said, let's move to Portland, Oregon, or Seattle, or friggin' Portland, Maine, and make rent there outrageously expensive. I don't believe that it was truly your original idea to start your own microbrewery or wear plaid lumberjack shirts either. No. All your friends bought Peruvian hats, so you did too. All of your friends started collecting vinyl records, so you started your own collection, even though it would be much easier to just listen to CDs like us mainstream sheeple do. A few hipsters discovered Mumford & Sons, and suddenly they're one of the biggest bands in the world. Then hipsters decide they're bored with them, and now I don't know if they even exist anymore. I guarantee you that this is how gluten-free diet started. A couple of hipsters somewhere, probably Brooklyn, actually had to eat gluten-free because of digestive problems. And so soon the idea started to seem trendy, and every hipster in the country was gluten-free as well. Oftentimes, hipster culture makes no sense. Hipsters love to call tobacco companies merchants of death. But then a few hipsters became obsessed with e-cigarettes and hookahs, and now every hipster goes through more tobacco products a day than a whole team of truckers, all purchased from those same tobacco companies. Hipsters hate American companies that exploit foreign labor, but randomly love Apple even though they are one of the worst offenders. Besides, why does every hipster need the new iPhone as soon as it comes out, since I thought they all listened to music on vinyl anyway? So congratulations, hipsters. You've somehow turned non-conforming into the biggest conformist culture out there. And if you want to talk about how mainstream people are exploited by corporations, I'm not the one who is convinced to give a so-called natural foods corporation $2 for a banana because they stuck an organic label on it. Now, if you want to live this way, where you mindlessly do whatever your friends are doing, like you're still in middle school, you can. But don't look down on me if I don't want to take a part in it. When you decide to go out and get a chicken so you can get cruelty-free eggs, because all your friends are doing the same, and then within a week, you and all your friends are giving your chickens to a local animal shelter because it turns out keeping a chicken is actually hard, I feel pretty good about being mainstream. Okay, that was your crash course on what a hipster is, especially hipster fashion, which is what we can apply to eBay. So if you have any of these items already listed or going forward when you list them in the future, you might want to add the word hipster to the titles to get more traffic to your items. First off are these oversized, chunky eyeglass frames. This has been a thing for a while, and I've actually sold some frames, not quite this thick and chunky, but I did put hipster in the title, and they sold. So there's no way to know if the buyer included that keyword in their search or not, but I did get a sale with that keyword on my item. The next item would be super skinny ripped jeans, either for men or women. So if you have any of these for sale, put the word hipster in the title, see what happens. The next item is crazy patterned socks. So if you have any listed that could be hipster worthy, Try that keyword in the title. Another item, Doc Martens boots or shoes. Now, in years past, this look was called grunge or even goth if it was black or dark colored heavy boots like this. But now, it's a hipster thing. Doc Martens in any color, any style. Hipsters like them. The next item is faded vintage t-shirts. There are a lot of reproductions out there now because this is a trendy item. So it really doesn't matter if the t-shirt is authentic vintage or a reproduction or just retro looking. Try that word hipster because they do wear them. Next, we have suspenders. That is a true hipster look right there with the full beard and the jeans with the suspenders. 
So go back through your listings and add hipster to those. And then we can't forget hipster hats. There are many styles, such as the fedora, the beanie, the oversized beanie, baseball caps, and what I call a newsboy cap. Also, just a keyword that you can use to impress your friends, as far as beanies are concerned, there's something called the art of helixing. In menswear, the only way to wear a beanie these days is perched on the crown of your head with your ears exposed. Completely impractical, but completely on trend. And this article explained exactly how to do it, as if we need that look explained. <laughs> you just don't put your hat all the way on. But there's a name for this, and it's called helixing. Now, don't you feel more on trend that you know all this <laughs> and that you can speak intelligently about the hipster trend? The last thing you might have in your inventory is a vintage record player or turntable because that is very hipster-esque to have vinyl to play on an actual record player. Maybe this word was news to you. It's been a thing since about 2010 where there's actually a word for this look, but you are now in the know and you can speak intelligently about hipster fashion and hipster culture. I would really love to hear if you were familiar with this subculture and all of these characteristics of a hipster. Please comment below. Thanks for watching and keep calm and eBay on. Bye. Okay, I want to talk to you about the materials section. One valuable resource in the premium library is a database of template letters you can use when you don't know what to say to a buyer. A lot of people come to eBay and don't have customer service experience so they can be a bit nervous about what to say to customers or how to handle specific situations just because you've never had to do that. So I've got your back. <laughs> the materials section is my version of a policies and procedures manual in a customer service situation. And I get this from my banking experience because when I was in banking back in the 80s and 90s, if there was ever a problem, you would go to this policies and procedures manual. It was an actual book and you would look up what to do in that situation. <laughs> it was very helpful. So here I give you guidance and a template letters on how to handle any situation that may arise. And if a situation happens more than once, I create a file for it. So you can see here some of the template letters that I've written and um, they are very helpful if you don't know what to say. Now by far the most popular one is I can't find the item to ship it or the item is damaged or it broke during packaging. This is a very common situation and has happened to me many times over the years. So don't panic, there is a solution. These situations might happen to you. Can't find the item, that is the most common. Or you discover a defect, flaw, stain, issue with the item when you are packing it to ship it. Or the item broke while you were packaging it, that has happened to me. Or there's an error in the listing and the item doesn't match something in the listing. You made a mistake, which we all do. Bottom line, you never want to cancel a sale as out of stock under the seller cancel option. According to the eBay seller standards, canceling a transaction for out of stock will result in a defect which can compromise your account. 
So you either want to ship the buyer a replacement of their choice within reason or put the option of canceling the transaction on the buyer. It's always better to ship them something because you have a captive buyer in your hand and they have money to spend so you want to try to keep their money and ship them something and make them happy all at the same time. And this is not an unusual request from the buyer's standpoint. Companies have out-of-stock situations all the time. If you use Instacart and they go pick up your groceries for you and something is not available, they will substitute something else. So unless the item is rare or collectible, it usually isn't a big deal. Contact the buyer through the eBay messaging system with this script. Hello, thank you so much for your purchase. We are so sorry, but whatever the situation is, and cannot ship your item. We are so embarrassed. We would like to offer you a replacement item of anything in our store valued at X dollars or less. Please take a look around and see if there is anything else you might like or we are happy to cancel the transaction if you don't see a suitable replacement. Please let us know how to proceed and again accept our apologies for not being able to send the original item. And that dollar amount, I usually offer five to ten dollars more than what the item they purchased was priced at. So if it was a thirty dollar item, I might say choose a replacement valued at $35. I make the deal a little bit better and sweeter so that they might take it. Usually the buyer will cancel and you can process the cancellation as a buyer request. And this strategy works in your favor because you are running your business with integrity and you look professional and so does eBay. You don't get a defect due to out of stock or seller cancellation. The customer makes the decision about whether to cancel or choose a different item. So you give the buyer the power of making the decision and that makes buyers happy. They feel empowered because they get to choose what to do. If the customer chooses to cancel, you can truthfully and with integrity choose the buyer cancel option. You aren't pulling a fast one on a buyer and confusing them. You've discussed it and you're in agreement on what to do. If the buyer chooses a replacement, you can still get a sale and hopefully a feedback. Just remember if you send them a replacement to end the item so that it's not still for sale. Another added bonus of the Premium Library is the Help Desk service where you can email me anytime and I answer quickly. And it is me, I don't hire people to do this. If you do not see the scripted letter you need, I will write it for you and then add it to the database. So you are never left not knowing what to do or say in any situation. And I continually add to this section as new situations develop. So remember, everything is downloadable and you can keep these documents on your computer to access forever. You just wouldn't get any future documents that are added later in time. So that is a quick overview of the customer response letters. That's not all that's in the materials section, but one of the more popular components. Okay, thanks for sticking around till the very end. And again, if you haven't experienced the premium library, you can do that absolutely free. You can download everything in there and never come back. It's a no pressure situation because I am not a salesperson. I'm a teacher and I'm here to teach you stuff. So thanks for watching and have a great day on eBay. Bye everybody.